Hello, hello, hello. How are you guys doing tonight? It's late, I just woke up. <laughs> um, I came home after my meeting tonight and I completely crashed out. I was so tired. It got really cold in Indiana today. It is 43 degrees outside, but it, it didn't ever get very warm today. It was like up in the low 50s. And uh, it was just really cold today. I think that's about as high as it got. And it just kind of drained me, honestly. I got up today and uh, I had to go to FedEx and pick up some packages that I got. And um, FedEx is like crazy. Like I do this FedEx rant and you know, people watch my rant videos. Um, like their exaggerated re reactions or responses, you know, to how I really feel about something. But I really can get kind of heated about FedEx. Like it just is so ridiculous to me. It's like, okay, first of all, so they come, I don't know when they come to my door. They don't ever ring a doorbell. They don't ever knock on the door. I would know because the dogs would go crazy, right? I don't ever hear them. And then like I wake up and I go and there's like this notice on my door, right? And it always says, this is, and I, this is, I never get like a first one, a second one, or a third one. I just always get, a, the note that I always get is, this is our final attempt to contact you. And I'm like, okay, well, where were the first and second and third con, I mean, I never got those contacts, right? Which I don't believe it anyway, which I have to tell you what's interesting in just a second. So now I get emails, okay, telling me that I'm getting stuff, you know, through FedEx and I can track the tracking number. And what's interesting is like on the day that it's supposed to come, because I usually have it held now, like at a, uh, at this place uh, down the street that has like a FedEx in it. So I can just go there and pick it up and they can keep it there as long as, you know, like, because otherwise they send it back. Like if you can't pick it up, they send it back, right? So what's interesting is that it'll be, it'll say, like the email will say, like your FedEx package is scheduled to be delivered on whatever today was, Tuesday, October, I don't even know what today was, 22nd. And then I'll get a notice on my door and it'll say, this is true story, it'll say, final attempt. And I'm like, final attempt? I literally, the email just said it was supposed to be delivered today. So you're telling, like, and this is, I think, them just not wanting to, like, have to keep on coming by. I've heard a lot of shady stuff about FedEx. Like, that they sign their own packages and stuff like that. I don't know. Um, but I never used to get any kind of, you know, like, FedEx packages. But, so anyway. I went and I got this um, FedEx package today. Which was the Anastasia of Beverly Hills. Um, Halloween palette. I didn't even open it yet because I wanted to open it and show it on video. The box is really pretty though. I like looked at the box on the outside. Um, and then I got something else <laughs> which I'm going to show in a video as well. And a little secret. A little secret. Got a secret. Got a secret. What's that shit from? that show that Alex used to watch. I watched the first season and I really actually liked it. Pretty Little Liars. He said that the whole series ended stupidly. But then I went and got a coffee at Starbucks. I think I still have like a little bit of my coffee left. Yeah, I do. I'm really thirsty for water right now. I could just like chug water, which is why I, I have this. It's filled with water. But, um, did you ever wake up and you're just like so thirsty for water? This is like, I'm like so thirsty for water. Well, I woke up and Pee Pee was like on the floor and he was like, mm, mm, mm. and I was like, what's he doing down on the floor? Like, it, which thank God, because he woke me up. And he just, Pee Pee has not, 
Like, today, he was better, but he was real lethargic, and then he didn't want to eat his dinner. So, when I went down tonight to take him to, or when I went out just now to take him outside, like, his dinner plate was empty, so he must have eaten all of his dinner. I don't know. Um, but, like, he just, the last couple days, it's been, like, up and down, up and down, like, his, like, how he's been. He didn't, cough, like, yesterday, he coughed a lot. Today, he didn't cough a lot at all. I don't think he even coughed once today. Um, and he was, like, running around and stuff outside, but he was real lethargic. Like, most of the day, he just kind of laid in bed. When I came back from running errands and stuff, like, I usually, when I walk in the house, he, like, comes running down the stairs. He didn't come running down the stairs until I let Moon Tucker out. And I was like, oh, we're going outside, PP. And then he came downstairs. But I don't know if it's the weather or his age or because he's sick. I don't know what it is, but he's just... <laughs> Some days are better than others. Alex and I were kind of talking about it tonight. I said it kind of makes me, you know, like, I don't know. It just makes me sad. It makes me kind of scared. Um, in the past, you know, when PP wouldn't act really great, like when he would act. I can't remember now if it was yesterday or the day before where he just wasn't himself. You know, in the past, it was like, sometimes, like, he would act that way, and then the very next day, he would be, like, back to normal, and, um, we would figure out later that it was maybe, like, you know, he had lost a tooth or something like that, because you could, like, kind of, you would find a tooth or something, but now, I think it's just, there are just some days he just doesn't feel that great, you know? So, anyway... But, like, tonight, um, we gave him some Abu and Tucker's food again tonight, and he didn't want it, like, which was, it's really crazy. Like, usually, when we give him some Abu and Tucker's food, he just, like, eats it right up. Because usually, he just snubs his food. He just does not like it. Um, and then we have to, like, put it down several times throughout the night. But, like, today, when we put down, um this whole plate of Boo and Tucker's food, he just didn't want it. He, he, like, went and sniffed it and, like, walked away, which is weird. I mean, he usually did, like, yesterday. He, like, you know, and anyway, it doesn't matter, but... Oh, so anyway, he was real hyped up, though, right now. When I took him outside, he was running all around the front yard, and then I took him inside, and Alex must have given him his medicine when he went to bed, because usually I give it to him later. But, um... He had already had his medicine, and he was drinking a bunch of water in the kitchen, and then he just kind of looked up at me, and he ran back up the stairs. He was ready to go back to bed. <laughs> Little guy. He was so cute. So, yeah, that was, um, that's that, but I don't know, and I also think, like, the change in the weather affects him. I know that sounds crazy, but it's, like, because it's been colder and kind of rainy, like, I think that that kind of affects him versus, like, you know, when it's, like, warmer outside and stuff like that. I don't know that I think he necessarily does better in one rather than the other. I just think the change of weather is hard for him. I don't know why. Um, but that's been, like, the last year, you know, that he's been kind of, like, the change in weather has been hard. I think I'm very cognizant of the fact, too, that we're, like, a year out from when the vet thought he was going to make it. And I think that scares me. And so I'm very carefully watching, I mean, you know, every little movement about him. I don't know. We'll just see. Most days he's better than he's not. So... That's that. And then I went and got coffee. And, um, what did I do after that? I got coffee. And then, I'm like thinking about my day. Oh, oh, then, oh, no, first I got coffee. Then I went and I picked up my FedEx packages. <laughs> And then I went to, you guys, my kitchen counter is absolutely ridiculous right now. There are so many packages on my kitchen counter. There's so many things that I have that were sent to me. Some from my review channel, some from you guys that were so nice. 
and um, and then just like a lot of makeup right now. So there's that, and then um, what else? Got coffee. Went and picked up those packages, and oh, then I went to Target. I wanted to get another hoodie, champion hoodie, not like this champion hoodie that I have that says champion across, I don't know if you can see it, but it says champion across it. I get this at Meijer. Um, but the champion hoodie that um, I got at Target last week when I made the video that just has like the little V right here, it doesn't even say champion on it. So I went to a different Target than I usually went go to. I went to one that's a little closer, but I never typically go there. It's like this huge Target. I don't know why I don't go there. It's just like, um, every time I go in there, I'm just a little overwhelmed. The Targets that I usually go to are either the one um, over, you know, kind of like by where Tanya lives a little bit. That, I go to that Target a lot just because I've gone to that Target for 20 years, you know, and I just like that Target a lot. I'm just like a creature of habit, you know? Um, or there's a Target by us that I go to, but that Target is kind of small, and they don't usually have a bunch of stuff, but that's where I got the original Champion thing, so I was going to go in there, but I went to this other one instead, and oh my god, they had like an entire Champion section of stuff, right? And it was sweatshirts and fleece jackets, and they even had like workout pants and workout like, it was like this whole new line of stuff that they have, it was like this because they have like a new like logo or emblem. And it's all really, really affordable. Like these fleece jackets that I got were like $30 each. I couldn't believe how affordable it was. And um, so yeah, they were like $30 each. And then, um, what was I gonna say? And then like the sweatshirts were like $24.99. I got Alex one, cause he wanted one. And then I got a blue, a light blue one. I wore it tonight to my meeting. And um, I got something else there too. I don't know, but I showed it in my review video today. I did a big haul of my review video. <clears throat> so, yeah, that was that. And then I went, where did I go for that? I had to go to the post office to mail some stuff. I also got a package in the mail from the post office. My stomach is killing me all of a sudden. I don't know why. Um, I got a package in the mail from the post office. So I went and picked that up. I'm like starting to like really wake up. It's late, but I went to bed so damn early tonight. I hope I can go back to sleep because I have my training tomorrow. I literally could chug like four huge bottles of water right now. I still have not finished the chain. I didn't really listen to a lot of it last night and today. I have, um, I have about an hour. Well, I have about an hour and 20 minutes left. 10 minutes, an hour, 10 minutes. I have not a whole lot less than yesterday. So then I went to the post office, then I came home and um, I filmed my review video first and then I filmed a drama video. And then Alex texted me and said that he was on his way home and I had to start getting ready for my meeting. Um, so I was like uploading videos and then I was like, I went upstairs and I took a shower. Okay, so I, I don't think I showed it on here. I think I showed it in my live stream. And then I showed it um, in my review haul that I did today. But I bought this. Alex actually picked it out. It was called, it's a shampoo bar from Lo, um, from Lush. And it's called New, like the, if you go in there, I know it sounds funny, but it's like called New. Like that's the name of the bar, right? Cause I was like, what is it called? And she goes, New. And I go, no, I know it's New, but like, what's it called? And she goes, no, it's called New. And I was like, oh, okay, like N-E-W. It smells like Red Hots. You guys, it is so fantastic. It is so fantastic. I washed my hair with it tonight. It made my hair like so like thick and just really like silky. It was really nice. And um, then I, yeah, I use like all Lush products in my hair tonight. I think I'm like kind of like slowly getting back into wanting to use a lot of Lush products again. Somebody commented on one of my, my haul video tonight and said that Lush, they said something like, 
lush, like markets itself at being like all fresh and organic, whatever, but like they really just like highly perfume their products or something like that. And I was like, is that true? Like, I didn't know that if that's true. Like, when you're there, like, and you're talking, like, the people that work in Lush, like, they really know about their products, right? <coughs> they, um, and they're always like, you know, it has this in it, it has that in it, it has this in it, it has that in it, and, you know, um, so I don't know. I'll tell you the other people that really know about their products is Kiehl's. Kiehl's is just super expensive, and I don't notice, um, for me, I don't notice a huge difference in their products, but I have a friend of mine, actually, um, well, it's my friend that, like, that I've known for 20-some years, and we went on the date, and, um, just decided it would be better if we were friends, we just didn't necessarily click that way, but anyway, he's been my, like, best guy friend forever. He, like, only uses Kiehl's and Origins. He's like really weird about his skin. And he has like beautiful skin. Beautiful, beautiful skin. And um, his family's like Irish. And so he's very like, uh, like he has really like dark, dark. You wouldn't know it was red, but it's like dark red hair, you know? And um, he has like really pale complexion. He doesn't get out in the sun really at all. And we're kind of like night and day when it comes to all that kind of stuff, which is so funny that we're such close friends. But anyway, um, but he has really nice skin. And he takes care of it a lot. And he's really into Kiehl's and Origins. Like, those are the two brands that he, like, just swears by. And he's and he's worn them for years. He lived in New York City for a long time before he went to medical school. Where did he... Um, okay, so... I'm trying to think. My friend... Okay, so these were his goals when he was, like... He graduated in college with, like, very, very serious degree. And he graduated... Well, he graduated with a biochemistry degree um, from Purdue University. I think he graduated, like, first or second in his class. And then he worked in bio... He was a biochemist for a long time. <clears throat> and then he went back into medical school. Anyway, um, he... Like, it was his goal that he wanted to leave on, live on the West Coast and he wanted to live in the East Coast once before he, like, settled down. And, um, so he lived in Los Angeles for about a year and a half. To, no, no, closer to two years. And then he moved from there to New York City. And, um, he lived... He actually worked in... <laughs> while he was there... Um, he had, like, a very, very serious job, but then his part-time job was that he worked, um, in a gift shop. He, he did this, like, two days a week or something. He worked in a gift shop that was, like, in the Twin, one of the Twin Towers, because he was just, like, devastated when all of that happened, because he knew a lot of the people that died in that. Um, but he lived in New York City for a while, too. And, um... Yeah, and then he came back to Indianapolis and went to medical school. Going to medical school is his way of settling down. This is a friend of mine that is, like, so serious. Uh, no, like, no, he's not so serious. He's so smart, and he just really um, busts his butt when it comes to, like... He just has always been, like, done... I mean, he's just a really hard worker. I'm very proud of him. I love him dearly. He's one of the neatest people in my life. But, um... What was I gonna say? What was I talking about before all that? I don't even remember what I was talking about. It doesn't really matter, does it? You guys, I need a haircut so bad. Look at this. I get my hair cut on Thursday. I thought I got it cut today, but I get it cut on Thursday. I, like, got done vlogging last night. Was it last night? That I got done vlogging, and I was like, I don't think my hair appointment is tomorrow morning. I was like, I think my appointment is on Thursday. 
And so I went, and sure enough, it said the 24th, not the 22nd. I was like, oh. Oh, I was talking about skincare products, because he uses Origins and Kiehl's. So, um... What is that billboard? Sometimes I don't, I read bill so I feel like really like I'm get confused very easily. Like sometimes I read billboards or I read tweets and I don't like do you ever like read Twitter and you're like, I don't understand this. Like people will say something and then it's like got all these responses and I'm like, I don't understand this. I don't understand what's going on. <laughs> That produce. So yeah, so um but what was I talking about with the lush products? Okay, oh that cinnamon bar, that new bar here. It's so fantastic. I actually, so I had a tin can, you know, like one of those tin cans from Lush, and I wanted to put my soap in there, my new shampoo in there, but I had that Daddy O bar, which is like a conditioning bar, and it's supposed to make your hair white, but I don't think that worked at all. Like, I don't believe in it. So I pitched that. I'd had it forever, and I finally threw it out. I was like, I'm done with this. And I was like, I'm, I know Alex love, Alex so swears by those shampoo and conditioning bars, and I was like, I don't think I'm gonna like this. But, I got it, and I was like, this is pretty good. So. Yep. That was that. And then. What else? Dream. Dream, dream, dream. I was talking to somebody today that like um, that I know through sobriety and they had kind of like just like one of our other friends was like oh do you watch Peter's videos and she was like no and somehow she like came on this channel like she didn't see my other channels which is usually out <laughs> you know people find me through my other channels but she found this channel first and she was like I don't even know what a vlog is and she was like but do you really do hour long videos every single day and I was like yeah and she was like well whenever you know you say that you're going to vlog she was like I didn't really know what that meant <laughs> and I was like well that's what it means and she was like that's incredible that you do that and I was like I love it I have so much fun doing it she's like how do you come up with stuff to talk about every night I was like I have no idea and tonight is one of those ideas that I, or tonight is one of those nights and it's just like I don't really have any idea <laughs> how I come up with stuff. I just kind of go from one thing to the next, you know? But, um, yeah. So, then I washed my hair with all that stuff and I used the Veganese conditioner. I love the Veganese conditioner from Lush. And then, lotion up my body and <laughs> lotion up my body and got ready and um, went to the meeting tonight and we had a great meeting and we talked about gratitude in the meeting tonight. And, um, it was good. It was fun afterwards. It was like we all kind of just like hung out and um, yeah, it was just fun. We all just kind of like hung out and stopped. It was at the end. Oh my God, the battery is about to die. Oh my God. I have the other battery, but I don't even know if it's charged, you guys. Oh my God, this will be the world's shortest vlog. Well, I'll wait till it dies and then I'll change the battery. I'll pull over. I, I hope to God I brought the other battery. I'm almost positive I just put it in there before I left. But anyway, at the meeting tonight, we hung around for a long time afterwards. It was kind of fun. Like, for a half an hour, we stood inside and just, like, talked. And I have got to get back on my eating healthy Optivia. Did I not bring this damn battery? Are you kidding me? I'm... I don't know. Here it is. Um... So they always have cookies at this meeting. But these ladies from the church leave. They're so sweet. But tonight they have these graham cracker cookies. It was like half of a graham cracker. Oh my God, you guys, these cookies were so delicious. It was like half of a graham cracker. And it almost was like it had like praline stuff on top of it. I love that lip gloss, by the way. 
I don't know what it was. It was like like a praline something on top of it. It was so good. And um, yeah, I ate a few too many of these cookies. But it was fun tonight. There weren't a lot of people there. I was kind of surprised. Usually like fall and early winter, we, you know, we get quite a few people. It's like when it starts getting really cold. Well, it, it, the one thing is that my meeting has a lot of older people that have been coming to it for years and years and years. So I guess this is the time that they start going away because they usually go to Arizona and Florida like for the winter. So maybe that's what it was. It was about half the size tonight as it usually is. I don't know. I'm not a very good judge of that anymore. I know I talked about that on here not too long ago. Every day I wake up and I think to myself, today's the day that I'm gonna eat real healthy and, or I'm, today's the day I'm gonna get it back on the Optavia. And I don't. You know, I bought that Garmin watch and I was gonna start walking every day. And um, I legit really was. Like that was my, you know, it's like I'm gonna start going to the gym three nights a week. And then I'm gonna walk outside and I'm gonna listen to my audiobooks or just listen to music or something. And then I'm gonna start getting from walking to running. That was my goal. I struggle with it so hard. I was like looking at myself today. Where was I? Uh, we were like walking out of the meeting. There's like these double doors that are glass. And I was standing there looking at myself in these double doors and I'm like, you know, I said that I wasn't gonna be as hard on myself and all that kind of stuff, but like, like you guys literally only see me from here up and I don't even look that great from here up, right? But like I was standing and I was looking at myself in this mirror, you know, this reflection of these doors tonight. I was like, you're huge. Like, you, like I really feel big right now. I don't feel comfortable. A lot, most of my clothes do not fit. And, like, even my bigger jeans don't fit. And it was nice, somebody the other day, or it was, this was nice to somebody, they said, you know, but you lost 25 pounds. They were, I was, like, beating myself up about something. They said, but you lost 25 pounds on Optavia. And I've gained most of it back, um, if not almost all of it, you know? And... You know, I inventory it, I work on it in recovery. I talk about having a food addiction with my sponsor. I've talked about it with my counselor. I've been on so many programs. I've talked to my doctor about it. Like, I get, like, it's really hard, you know, like. I think, like, I don't even know why I'm getting really emotional about it tonight, but I think, like, I've never really um, I don't know that I've ever really been super honest with myself about what a struggle it is. I mean, I'm, I am honest about it, you know, but like, you know, I mean, it's so hard because like, I will, um, You know, I'll, I know this is gonna sound stupid, but it's like, I'm such like an emotional eater. Like I eat over my emotions, but not only that, like, like I'll go to the, the store, like I'll go to Meyer, right? And I'll walk in and, you know, I'm not stupid. I know how they market things. So I'm not the only one that they can do this to, you know, but like, I'll see all the Halloween stuff. And then I'll think, oh my God, you know, I want some Halloween cookies. And then I want, you know, chili. And then I want corn biscuits. And then I, you know, and then I get in my head and I start thinking about fall. And I think about dinners that I used to have with my mom when I was growing up, you know? And I want to recreate that in my head. And so like, I, th I think about getting all this food and then having it and like, you know what I mean? Like I'm very much like that or like stuffing at Thanksgiving and mashed potatoes and all that, you know, it's just like for me, I like in such like, 
an emotional eater because like I eat when I'm happy, I eat when I'm sad, I eat to celebrate, I eat to grieve, you know, all that kind of stuff. But at the same time, it's not. Okay, I'm back. I had to pull into this little strip mall and I don't remember exactly what I was talking about, but I was talking about my weight and my being unhealthy. I don't know, I just, I have this realization, you know, just like what a struggle it is for me and it, you know, it is such an addiction for me and I know that. I mean, I just really have such a, it's just, I have such a food addiction because I, like I know exactly what I need to do, you know. And I'm not stupid in, and I'm not in this belief that like fad diets or like programs like Optavia are gonna get me healthy. Like I'm not stupid. I mean, I know that, right? Like I can't, I couldn't live on Optavia for, you know, the rest of my life. I'm not stupid, I know that. But I do believe that things like that can jumpstart me and getting me motivated, you know, to eat healthier. Because I don't know, like it's so weird, like, you know, I think back about like when, I mean, it, it's just, it's, this has been my cycle my entire life, my, my entire life. You know, I'll have like six months where I do really, really well or a year where I do really, really well. And then I have it followed up by a year where I gain. I mean, I'm like literally that yo-yo, you know? And, um... And I think, like, I talk about it, and I'm, you know, honest with my feelings about it, but I'm not really honest, I think, with myself about what a true, true struggle it is for me. And I think, like, like, I kind of, like, laugh it off, or, you know, I'll say, like, oh, I'm gonna do this, or I'm gonna get back on it, or, you know, whatever. But, like, I'm kind of at the point now where I don't... Like, I don't really know. Like, I feel very lost with it, you know? Like, I just don't... I don't really feel inspired to, to eat healthy. And... I feel unhealthy. You know, like, throughout the day, I just, I feel, like, unhealthy. I don't fit into my clothes. And, um... And I'm not stupid. I know it's affecting my health, you know? Um... And my, going to my trainer is so difficult just to even get my butt there. But then when I do get there, like even just working out for a half an hour with my trainer is so hard. You know, some days I just look at her and I say, you know, and she's so sweet, but she's still very challenging, which she should be. And I'm like, I don't really think you have any idea like how hard this is for me. Um, like even just, <laughs> I mean, even just, like, lacing up boots, like, bending over, like, I'm gutted, you guys, like, for days. I mean, obviously, when you see side, you know, video of me and stuff like that walking around the kitchen, you see that. Like, I mean, it's, like, I get winded, like, lacing up boots and stuff like that. Like, I'm like, what has happened to you? You know, you've so let yourself go. And I was thinking about this because it's, like, okay. So, when I was with my ex, it was, like... Before we got together, I was like, I always get real comfortable in relationships. Like, that's a big part of it, right? But I was like running and I was like working out. And I was like, that was when I was the healthiest in my entire life, was right before I got together with him. And then when we got together, we started just eating horribly. And I believe he had a food addiction too. And, and, and he would say that. I mean, he said at the end, we're just two, you know, food addicts that, you know, fell in love. He said something like that. And I grossly gained weight in that relationship. I mean, I literally went from like, I mean, I almost, I almost gained close to like 100 pounds 
in the matter of six and a half years. If, I, I think I did gain 100 pounds in six and a half years. But that's a lot of weight, you guys, you know? And I remember at one point, like towards the end, I was gonna start working out again and I went to walk on the treadmill and I just was like, I remember I came back and I was just like, I can't, I can't do it. And I was like, I don't understand. Like I used to be able to walk and run and whatever. And he goes, yeah, but it's like, you've gained like a hundred pounds. He was like, it's like you putting a backpack on with a hundred pound weight in it and walking around. He's like, you're not used to it. And I'm not. And I'm not again, you know? And then I started losing weight. And I lost... I lost 50 pounds. And then I lost 30 more when I got with Alex. I, well, like, I lost 50 and then I... So I lost like between 70 and 80 pounds. And I was working out all the time. I was eating salads. I was super healthy. And, um, I mean, we would go out and eat bad stuff, but I was still, I was working out. I was, like, really active. And then I just slowly, over time, started putting on weight. And I remember when we went and got, when I met Alex, I was, like, 170. And when we got married, when we went to Las Vegas that week, I was, like, 190. 189, 190. I think like like that week my weight fluctuated from like 187 to 191 because we had a scale and I remember our hotel room and I remember at one point I looked and I was like 191 and another point I was like 187. And I was so hard on myself. I remember like, because all of our friends were out there um, <clears throat> and you know, the family and we were going to the pool and stuff and I didn't want to like be shirtless at the pool because I had gained so much weight and I was so hard on myself. And then we got married and we came back and then our friends got married a year later. I like remember my weights per event. So I don't know if other people are like that, but like I remember our friends that were in our wedding because he proposed to her at the Bellagio the other day after we got married. Then they got married like a year later and we were in their wedding. We spoke in their wedding. And um, like we have pictures of that wedding and I look pretty good. But I remember we went to their, uh, we went to her bridal or her bachelorette party in Chicago because we went to the public hotel up there. And I remember I was like 212 at that time. Because I remember right before we left to go up, she and I were having a conversation in this, like, we went out one night and we were sitting in this bar and I remember I said to her, I've gained so much weight. And she goes, I, and she, you know, like, and I have a lot of really healthy friends that are really honest, you know? And she was like, I can tell you've put on weight. And I was like, can you really tell I've put on a lot of weight? I mean, I've put on a lot of weight since I've gotten married. And she said, well, how much have you put on? And I said to her, I said, um, I've put on like over 20 pounds. And because at that point I had, you know, like 20 pounds in a year. And she was like, um, but I can, I remember seeing pictures of us going to the bachelorette party. I put the pictures up actually on my Instagram from time to time. It's me with the glasses on and I have like, um, a, what do you call it? Like a Western shirt and I'm kind of turned sideways and the shirt's kind of unbuttoned. I mean, I look heavier, but I don't look heavy, heavy, you know? And I keep on thinking that the, the battery is flashing at me. And so that was 212. And then my ring stopped fitting. The last time I remember my ring fitting was when I was 218. And um, I remember because it was Pride Day and Alex actually, he and a friend were on their friend's um, float. And so she worked for Absolute Vodka and so she asked if we wanted to be on this float. And she was like, you have to wear these absolute sleeveless shirts and stuff like that. And I was like, I, there's no way. I'm not being on anybody's float with a sleeveless shirt. I'm just not going to do it. And that was at 218. And so Alex and his girlfriend, they were on the float. And I walked on the side by the float. 
And I, that was a real moment for me because I was like, you're now missing out on things. Like I had been for a long time, you know? My friend before he moved to Denver, which was before I met Alex, you know, when I was heavy with my ex, he would invite me to parties that he had in barbecues and I would not go. And he would say, why aren't you going? I'd say, I'm too fat. I'm not letting anybody see me. And he would say, nobody cares, Peter, about how much weight you've gained. I mean, we care. People want to see you. People miss you. And I wouldn't go. Like, I allowed my weight, which I think also affected my social anxiety, to keep me from going to things. I, I would not go. I would not. I wouldn't even entertain the idea of going. And, um, so... You know, I think, like, a lot of times there's, like, a slobbiness that is related to people that are heavy. But I really think that what it's misunderstood um, is it's it's a level of comfort that when you become a certain size, it's, like, you... It, it's really uncomfortable to wear clothes that are... Even if they're, let's say, triple XL, okay? The majority of clothes for people that... Like, I'm really heavy in my gut, Okay? So, when I wear a shirt, let's say if it's even, like, let's say if it's an XL, it'll fit me up here and everywhere as an XL, but in my gut, you can forget it. It won't, it won't fit. And so, then I have to get, like, a 2XL. Well, a 2XL looks super baggy on here and hangs down to my knees because I'm 5'10", I'm not 6'3", right? So, clothes don't fit. So, then what you do is you start wearing hoodies, you start wearing t-shirts, you start wearing, um, you know, a lot of that. You start... You don't want to do your hair because if you're just going to wear a hoodie and jeans, why do your hair? Just wear a hat. Put your hair back in the pony, ponytail. You know, it's you, so then it becomes it. There's, I think it's equated to sloppiness or being sloppy. Is that the word I'm looking for? When it's not about that at all, it's about comfort because you're so uncomfortable in other things. You know, it's like, and, and like I even like I get real hot, you guys, like in, um, like sometimes like. Okay, like tonight going to my meeting, I went down to the basement and I was like, where are these Joe's jeans that I have that are kind of cute? And I couldn't find them and I only had them in a 36 and I needed them in a 38. And so then I have my other jeans that were a 38, but every time I wash them, they're like slimmer jeans. Like they fit me when I've like, if I'm 10 pounds center, but I was like, if I pull myself into those tonight, they're going to be really uncomfortable. They're going to be like low on my butt. I'm not wearing those. So I just want to be comfortable. So even though it's like, 45 degrees outside and it was drizzling earlier. I have shorts on with a hoodie and then people are like, well, why do you have shorts on? And I'm like, cause I wanted to be comfortable, you know? And so, and then people are like, well, you've stopped taking care of yourself. Well, no, it's not necessarily that I've stopped taking care of myself. It's that I'm not comfortable and I want to be comfortable, you know, like it's hard to live life and go through life not comfortable. Like, I don't think people really get it. It's like when you have to dress up for something and you're way overweight, like it's not comfortable to, to put stuff on, you know, it just isn't. And then by the time that you're done getting ready, you've like, you're sweating and you're like hot and it's just, you know, so yeah, so that Pride Day was like, I can remember what I had on and everything I had on this uh, Grateful Dead t-shirt that I have, this purple Grateful Dead t-shirt. I think I got it at Target, anyway. <laughs> and these jean shorts, and I have this John Deere hat on, and and I, like, in pictures, I don't even look that heavy. And that was at 218. And then I just slowly started gaining weight, more and more, over time. You know, until like, I think the heaviest I've been with Alex is like 255, which is huge. And I weighed myself tonight, but after I ate, and I'm 242. So I'm basically back to where I was before I ever started Optavia. It's just hard, you know? It's really, really hard. And I know that everybody's gonna, I'm, I'm getting a lot of comments and people are gonna say, oh, you should do this or you should do that or this really worked for me or that really, and I really appreciate it. But it's like sometimes when I get like people like reach out and tell me all this kind of stuff, it's like, it's just, it sounds kind of like Peanuts character or you know, Peanuts parent, like Peanuts parents characters, you know? They're like, wah, 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 wah. It's like, I don't know what it's going to take. I, I really, really don't. 
I don't know what it's going to take to really strike the match of the fire to get me going. I, I don't know at this point. I really don't, you know? Like, Alex has put on some weight, too, and we were talking tonight. He's, I mean, when he's put on weight, that's like three to five pounds, right? Two to four pounds, something like that. But he's like, I really need to get back into shape, and I need to do all this kind of stuff. And I was like, and I think he's really hinting at, like, you know, we do, like, you know, because he won't come out and say anything critical of me. He doesn't, you know, but like, but I also don't ask the questions because my husband is really honest. So if I say to him, do you think I've gained weight, which I have asked over time, he'll say, yes, I think you've gained weight. I can tell that you've gained a lot of weight, you know, and he'll be like, but Peter, I just want you to be happy. Like, and I can tell that you're not happy at that weight, you know, and I'm not. And, you know, I think one of the things that's hard for me is that I, I, the things I've been through in my life, like, I'm a big believer in turning your wounds into wisdom. The things I've been through in my life, you know, I try to share my experiences to help somebody else, or if somebody else is sitting out there going, God, I so relate to this, you know, but at what point do I continue to just tell the same story over and over and over again without inspiring change. You know what I mean? Like, okay, that's great that somebody relates to my story of being heavy, but when do we do something about it? You know, when do I use my own story to, um, my nose is like driving me crazy tonight. It's like running. When do I use my own story to inspire change? You know, I was thinking about this because, you know, we have, we're have we going to Ultra in Miami. What I was going to say with that is, like, it's time for me to get my SHI to, to, together. And, um, God, what is going on? My nose is just, like... It's time for me to get my crap together and be an, an inspiring story of change with physical health. I think it's it's time it's time for me to do that. You know, and I want to do that for myself and for other people to help them realize they can do it too. If I have struggled this hard, then, you know, and I can turn it around. Um I just don't want to be a joke with me talking about my weight. You know what a joke He's talked about it for years, and he hasn't done anything about it. When I know what I need to do, you know? Okay, so, Peter, when do you take action and do it? I guess it's the question. And, um... I would like it to be, you know, a story of motivation and inspiration. Of, you know, getting... And not just losing weight, but getting, getting healthy. You know, and turning my life around. And I try to do that with everything I do. You know, dream your biggest dream, get sober, do all this kind of stuff. I like to turn all of the things that I've gone through in my life and I've learned, you know, into that. And maybe this is my next thing. I don't know. But I know that I can't continue to live happily the way that I am because I'm, I'm just not enjoying it. You know? Oh, this is what I was going to say. You know, like... I received a lot of, I don't really get it as much on here anymore, um, but I've received a lot of criticism in the past, like on this vlog, like I would get comments, people would say things about my weight, and if somebody commented, it was like literally like a year ago, okay? I ta I've talked about this comment on there before. This comment really, like, hit a chord for me, with me. I think sometimes, you know, like, when we talk about, like, negative comments and things like that, you know, people, like, really let it get to their head. But it's also about what you do with that. Like, do you allow that to maybe motivate you? Is there some truth into the negative comment? Things like that. You know, maybe you need to take a look at that. But it wasn't... It Okay, so the tone was really cruel in how the person said it. So their their tone, they can, you know, I don't really care. They can kick rocks with their tone. But what they said, right, like, I, it hit a chord with me. And what they said was, you know, like, oh, Peter always says this. Because, like, I was like, okay, I'm going on, um, going to Ultra in March. So I have, um, I was like, 
like it was like the exact same time last year. So I was like, I have, you know, October, November, December. I just did this the other day, it's five months. I have November, December, January, February, March, okay? I have five months. So I could be in the body that I wanna be in by March when we go to Ultra. And then I would be really excited. It's the next big trip that we're taking, you know, blah, 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 whatever. And this person commented and they said, he won't have lost the weight by March. It was really nasty how they said it. I don't remember how they said it. But he won't have lost the weight by March um, because he doesn't, he won't uh, admit that he has a food addiction, which I had talked about in many videos that I believe that I have a food addiction. And until he believes, it, it deals with the fact that he has a food addiction and does with the stuff, nothing's gonna change, okay? All right. Well, the way that it was said, I don't remember how it was and I wouldn't repeat it on here anyway, which was cruel, but let's break that down. <laughs> There's a lot of truth to that. I mean, even though I know that I have a food addiction, it's like, okay, and you've, I've talked to my sponsor about it. It's like, have I taken action? You know, if I called her tomorrow and I said, hey, like, I don't know what to do about this, she'd say, Peter, we've inventoried this. We've inventoried your part in it. And what your part in is it is what? And I would say, well, it's that I'm not taking any action that I'm choosing to stay stuck. And she'd say, exactly. And until you're ready for things to change, things aren't gonna change, period, you know? And, I was thinking about that comment because I was like going through the, I was like, okay, how much time do I have? Could I, you know, realistically, if I lost, you know, 10 pounds a month between, which is realistic, you know, 10 pounds a month between now, I mean, as heavy as I am, 10 pounds a month is realistic. 10 pounds a month between now and, you know, March. Yeah, I could reasonably be a lot thinner than I am now and, and be excited about going on that trip, you know? And, um, I was like, or will March come again? And, you know, I'll be like, I think I talked about this in last March because I was like, yeah, it's been a year or something like that since, maybe it was a year and a half ago somebody said that comment to me. I don't know, but it's like, it, or maybe it was, yeah, two years ago? I don't know, but like, you know, here we are again, and will I be sitting in March and being like, you know, 240, and being like, oh, well, I could have lost all the weight, or will I look at it and be like, okay, I actually did something about it. You know what I mean? I know you guys are probably like, why are you talking about this so much tonight? But I think I really need to talk about it to kind of hold myself accountable about, like, I'm really in my head right now. Like, this is very cathartic for me, this conversation that I'm having with myself because I really need to, you know, think it through. You know, and then I play stupid games with myself. Like, I love my review channel. How will I do reviews of certain kind of food if I'm eating healthy? Well, you guys see the review, if you watch reviews, you see me eating this food, but if you saw how much I really eat of it, you'd be like, okay, first of all, that's a waste. Because like with the Frappuccinos, like by and large, I take like two or three sips of them, if even that, and then I give them to Tanya, the majority of them. Like I only have a couple sips out of them. And then I give them to Tanya or I pitch them. Like, true story. And with a lot of the food that I eat, I either take it home and give it to Alex, or I'll eat it later sometimes, but very rarely, or I throw it away. Or I'll give it to somebody like Tanya if she's with me or near if I'm gonna see her. But so it is realistic for me because they're not mukbangs typically that I'm doing. I was gonna stop. Hold on. Because they're not mukbangs that I'm doing typically, even though I have done a few lately. Um, Yeah, I don't know. I just wanna feel better. I wanna get excited and motivated to be healthy. And then I see people that are that are so excited, excited, so excited and inspired, motivated by it, you know. Like I was thinking about my to myself, like a year ago. It hasn't even been a year, I don't think, since I got my gym membership. Maybe it has, but I don't think it has been. 
but like a year ago when I got my gym membership, like I was in there at night. Like I went in there late at night. Do you guys remember? And I would like work out, you know, and then I would vlog or, and there's been much of my life that I went into gyms and worked out late at night. I'm like, why can't I, I don't understand why I can't get back to that again. And the reality is that I can, I'm choosing not to. And I have to continue to remember that I can, but I'm choosing not to, you know? Um, and I, what do I need to do to get back to that? I think lately it's like, I don't know if this, if anybody else is like this, but it's like, you can see yourself at certain weights. It's like, okay, when I get below 230, I can kind of notice it, like in my face. Like I can personally kind of notice, like, oh, okay, Peter, you've lost some weight, right? But when I get above 240, like I can really notice it too. Like I can really notice, like, okay, you're really heavy right now. Like I really see it in my face and my angles and in the video in videos, I really notice it. And especially in the vlog. Like when I'm like picking out a screen, you know, like, <laughs> I mean, I just like, there's like one of three thumbnails that I just always pick from one of those. But anyway, for my vlog, but you know, oh, well I bought all this champion stuff. Okay. So this was interesting. So I bought all this champion stuff. Well, the champion hoodies, I get in an extra, I get in them in, a, in an extra large and they fit me no problem. Right. But they're stretchy, but they fit me no problem. Like comfortably. Even though they're not like, it wouldn't matter if they're stretchy, I guess. So I got these two fleece jackets and I was gonna wear one of them tonight. Oh no, there's no way. It was not going over my stomach. I was like, are you kidding me? Like, so I have to get this in a 2XL. I was like, oh my God. And then that was what kind of inspired all of this thinking. Cause I was like, or you could get your ass going back to the gym, get in shape, start losing weight and the XL will fit you. Cause in a matter of weeks, if I lost the weight, you know, I don't know. Now I do want a Diet Coke. I just passed McDonald's. And you know, the reality is like, like whenever you talk about like weight in a video, there's always a certain amount of people out there that like, that don't like you, that love listening to it because it's like defeatism kind of, I think. But the reality is that There's nothing really anybody can say that I haven't said to myself about my weight, you know, like, um, or there was like somebody that took a screenshot of me like a long time ago and like put it on Twitter and somebody sent this picture to me and was like, this is on Twitter right now. And I was like, damn, I look big. And then I was like, damn, you are big. You are. Like it was a legit screenshot of me. Why did it just go out of focus? It was like a legit, like even my hat doesn't fit me the same way that it did before. But it was like a legit screenshot of like me, like standing in the kitchen. Okay, I was like, you need to save that picture as motivation. Like seriously, like that needs to be motivation. Cause I think sometimes like, I'm like getting ready. This is where my body dysmorphia comes into play too. Like where, you know, like people a lot of times will talk about like body dysmorphia. They have it the other way, you know, where they think they look heavier than they really are. Okay. I don't have that. When I look in the mirror, like even right now, like I think, oh, I don't really look that heavy. Like I can see my angles and my face and whatever. But the reality is that like if I'm standing, okay, like tonight when I was getting ready to go to the meeting, I was like, well, I look pretty cute. Like I don't really look that heavy and whatever. My hair looked pretty good. And then I saw myself standing 
in the door. And I was like, your hair looks stupid, the sweatshirt looks huge, you look huge, you know, all this kind of stuff. And I was like beating myself up. And I was like, this is ridiculous. Okay, I'm sitting here talking about food and I'm driving through McDonald's to get a Diet Coke. What is wrong with this picture? But I'm getting one anyway, so. I think it's 109. I never can remember how much. I hope I can go back to bed tonight for a couple hours. I have to go to my training tomorrow. That one too, but. Good morning, can I help you? Yeah, can I get a large Diet Coke, please? Okay, anything else? Nope, that's it. Thank you. Bye. Ooh, it is cold outside. Oh, it's dropped. It was, what was it, 43? Now it's 41. <sighs> oh, how are you? How much? Is that it? Okay. Thank you. Thank you. It's a different price at every McDonald's I go to. I don't know. Does anybody else relate to me of what I'm saying out there? I'll get it together one of these days. Elle sent this to me from Colorado. Thank you, Elle. Karen always says, Karen, hi, I'm waving. I'm not close to you, Karen. I'm like 10 minutes away. <laughs> I know where Karen, I know close to where Karen lives. But I think about her every night when I'm like driving by. Because she always says, hi, waving in the comment sections. So I've decided that I'm gonna do, I wanted to do something really fun. I'm probably gonna do some giveaways over here on my vlog too, in the holiday season. Um, I started kind of thinking about it last, was it last night when we, oh, was it the night? I think it was the night before when I was talking about us doing the United Christmas service when we adopted the family. And I was like, I really want to give back to like the people that have been so committed to watching my videos and stuff, you know, and do some like fun giveaways and whatever. And I've had so much fun on my review channel in the last year um, that I'm going to do starting Black Friday, which is the day after Thanksgiving. So I think it's the 29th. I'm going to do um, a giveaway a day till Christmas over there. So I'm going to do gift cards and that, all that kind of stuff. Different kinds of stuff. So I'm real excited about that. And then over here, I'm going to do some giveaways and also <clears throat> on um, my drama channel, I'm going to do some giveaways. You know what I should do is on my Peterisms channel, I should buy some meditation books and do some giveaways. Maybe I'll do that. Is there a way for you to like get on Amazon? I bet there is. To get on Amazon and, because I gift people audiobooks a lot. Like I'll talk about audiobooks and they'll be like, oh, I don't have that one on Audible yet. I'm like, I'm getting it for you. <laughs> so I like just go home and I, like I've given the chain out. <laughs> because I'm loving the chain. But there has to be a way that you can, oh, well, it wouldn't be any different than people sending me stuff on through Amazon, would it? It has to be the exact same thing. So sure, I can do that. I don't know how to do that. I have to figure that out. <sighs> Do 
they got a large orange juice. That kind of sounds so good. Thank you. Delicious. So delicious. When I came out to vlog tonight, I was like, I'm gonna do a little bit of a shorter vlog tonight now, look. And now look, I've done almost an hour. Or have I done an hour already? I don't know. I'm like, although I'm kind of tired, like physically, I'm like awake. <laughs> always a problem. I like this song in my head that my mom used to sing and now I can't remember it, what it was. The book The Chain is so interesting. They like, so it like takes this, it's like all about this and then all of a sudden it kind of like takes a whole direction, like a turn into the other direction. And like at this point I'm kind of ready, not for it to be over, it's tense to listen to or to read, but I'm kind of ready for, I was gonna do my, um, I forgot my Spookathon wrap up, but um, I kind of just wanna see how it ends at this point. I think what I love about it is that it's just such a like genius new idea of a thriller. Like I haven't read anything like it before. You know what I mean? I was thinking of all these songs my mom used to sing. She used to sing this song all the time. Trailer for sailor rent, dun, dun, dun. rooms to rent for 50 cents. It's like called like King of the Hill or something like that, I think. But she would just stand in the kitchen while she was like cooking. Trailer for sailor rent, ba 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 ba, rooms to rent for 50 cents. It says something like, ain't got no cigarettes. I can't remember what else it says. King, King of the Road, maybe? Is that what it is? <laughs> my mommy and I used to do this. I did I say my mommy? My mom. <laughs> I, t I met my mom. My mom and I used to do this thing, too, where we would, like... <clears throat> We would do this funny dance where we would go around in a circle, like in our arms, like kind of like a rodeo thing, but not really. And we would do the da 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 da, like it's Carmen, I think, right? And um, and then she'd go the other way, and we go da 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 the other way, da 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 the other way, da 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 da. I remember years ago I saw the movie. When I was a little kid I saw it too. But when I was older I saw it and it was called A Christmas Memory. About Truman, it, Truman Capote wrote it. And it was with Geraldine Page who was in Trip to Bountiful. And it's about this little boy that went and stayed at his wacky aunt's house in the summer. It was kind of supposed to be, but you know. So Dill in To Kill Mockingbird was actually Truman Capote. And um, which is interesting if you read Ghosts Out of Watchmen, how she portrays Dill as an adult and knowing, you know, that it was Truman Capote. So Truman Capote used to come and stay with his aunt. That was like a true story. And um, she wrote him in as Dill in To Kill Mockingbird. I don't know if you know, but Harper Lee and um, Truman Capote were very good friends. She was his research assistant when he wrote. Um, I, can't, I never remember that book. In Cold Blood. She was uh, Truman Capote's research assistant. 
And they actually, part of their fault, they had like somewhat of a falling out because her book, that he introduced her to people to help her book get published. And her book became like the, what they considered, you know, the, for a long time it, it was considered a great American novel, but I don't think people really consider it that today. It gets criticized highly today. Um, but there was this, he wrote a short story called A Christmas Memory. It was like a novella or a short story. And it was about him going to stay with his aunt. And she was very childlike and stuff like that. And the book was a little, the, if I remember correctly, it's a little bit about her maybe having like some mental health issues. But they don't really talk about that. It's just how he sees her from his point of view. But if you watch the, the movie of it, I don't know, you might be able to find it on YouTube. I should look it up and see if you can look it up on YouTube. It's fantastic. Uh, but it's very sad. And um, it's about them making, she wakes up and she says, oh my, it's fruitcake weather. And then it's about them going, and the whole thing is about them going to get all this stuff to make fruitcake. And, um, I remember that line. Oh my, it's fruitcake weather. But the whole thing is about them making this fruitcake throughout the day and laughing and the dog's in the kitchen and it's getting in the flour and people are getting mad at them and kind of hushing them and telling them that they're acting like, you know, they're, that they need to act better and all this kind of stuff. And um, I'm going to pull in here and see. A Christmas memory. It says a Christmas memory audio, full movie. There it is. Oh no, that's not it. Oh, here it is. Yeah, Truman Capote's A Christmas Memory, 1966 Emmy winner. It looks like they remade it in 1997. Oh yeah, they did remake it. Seven-year-old Buddy experiences the best of country life, friendship, and the joy of giving during the Christmas season based on the story by Truman Capote. This one is with Patty Duke, Piper Laurie, Eric Lloyd, Jeffrey DeMunn, and Anita Gillette. But if you're going to watch it, you should watch the original. And look, it's Nick and Poncho, and it's called Together is Better. Oh, wait. Why is this on the Nick and Poncho channel? I don't understand. I think they put it on that channel because people aren't going to watch Nick and Poncho. You guys know I love Nick and Poncho, right? So Nick and Poncho are Nick and his uh, his dog Pon Poncine. Oh no 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 no! My audiobook and his dog. Uh, Poncho, who is a chihuahua that he calls Ponchino. But anyway, Nick just got married. <laughs> and Poncho had to carry the rings. It's so cute, you guys. If you go to the channel Nick and Poncho, there's like a two minute video on there. It's so adorable. And um, this woman's speaking to Poncho. She's like, Poncho. She speaks in Italian, so I can't imitate it, obviously. But she's like, Poncho, now you must take the rings to the church. Now, Poncho. If you take the rings to the church and you are a good boy. <laughs> These are the kind of videos I watch, you guys. I love just really sweet stuff. Like, I'm not into all of the all the craziness on YouTube. I like, I don't need the pranks. I don't need the hysterics. I don't need the beauty. I just need cute stuff like this. Poncho. If you take these rings, Poncho, and you are a good boy. Oh, she gives him uh, something like a little fish treat or something. She was like, not only will you get a fish treat, but you will also get a piece of cake, Poncho. <laughs> and so he goes, and, he, and she's like, now go, now go. And he's got the rings tied to his back. It's real cute. So then he shows up, and it's called Together is Better. It's literally like less than two, three minutes, two or three minutes, you guys. These videos that they do are genius, and they're like two minutes long. And so, 
he they show him like going to the church and then it's like Nick and his wife and they're like getting married and they're like now you can put the ring or whatever and he's like where's the rings where's the rings and then it shows Poncho and then this girl dog and they're eating cake together and it's real sweet <laughs> and I love that kind of stuff it makes me very happy all right I'm at 21 minutes and I don't want to um I know this is gonna stop in two minutes, so I'm gonna end the vlog now. And um, yeah, so I can listen to a little bit of my audiobook before I go home and try to catch a few, um, catch a few shut eyes. <laughs> anyway, I hope you guys are having um, an amazing Wednesday, unless you have other plans. But like I always say, do not have other plans. Make the most of your day. Be grateful for your lives um, and everything in it. Practice gratitude tonight. Tonight was a really great meeting for me and talking about gratitude. And um, I'm going to start making some changes. I mean it. I have to for me. And um, I'm not going to take, you know, life is not a dress rehearsal like I say. And I've got to remind myself of that as well. So, um, you know, make the most of your day today. Have an amazing Wednesday unless you have other plans. But uh, like I always say, if I don't have other plans, do something fun today. Set some goals for yourself. Um, do something today that will make yourself proud five, ten years from now. I needed to hear that today. And um, if nobody else has told you this today, I love you. Make sure that you look at yourself in the mirror every single day and say, I love you. You are important. You are valuable. Um, validate yourself. Do your positive affirmations every day. Make a gratitude list. And um, today is going to be an amazing day. If you're going to sleep listening to this, tomorrow is gonna to be an amazing day. And most importantly, make sure that you pass it on to somebody else and let them know how much they mean to you. Um, call them up, text them, and just say, hey, I was thinking of you, and I just uh, wanted you to know how much you mean to me. And um, yeah, we can help each other out a little bit each and every day. And I love you guys, and I will see you tomorrow. Bye. Love ya!